Welcome to COIS ADMN 1620, Introduction to Information Systems. This is Chapter 3, Ethics and Privacy. Learning Objectives. Describe ethics, its three fundamental tenets, and the four categories of ethical issues related to information technology. Discuss at least one potential threat to the privacy of the data in each of the three places that store personal data. Chapter Outline. 1. Ethical Issues, and 2. Privacy. Opening Case. The huge scope of privacy issues. All data are accessible. When you read the section in the book, what we want you to think about is how privacy issues could affect your data and how the organizations profiled could have prevented the privacy breaches discussed. And just as a reminder, these are the kinds of questions that make really good short answer questions for future exams. Ethical issues. Ethics. Ethics are the principle of right and wrong that individuals use to make choices that guide their behavior. Ethical frameworks. Ethics in the corporate environment and ethics and IT. Ethical frameworks, also known as standards. There are some widely used standards, the utilitarian approach, rights approach, fairness approach, common good approach, and deontology approach. Combine standards to create approaches for ethical decision making. The utilitarian approach is that an ethical action is the one that provides the most good or does the least harm. So from a corporate action point of view, we would take the action that produces the greatest good and does the least harm for all the affected parties. The parties being customers, employees, shareholders, the community, and the physical environment. The rights approach maintains that an ethical action is the one that best protects and respects the moral rights of the affected parties. Moral rights can include the right to make one's own choices about the way you lead your life, to be told the truth, to not be injured, and to enjoy a degree of privacy. What rights that people are actually entitled to and under what circumstances is debated very widely. The fairness approach is based on the idea that ethical actions treat all human beings equally, or if they have to be treated unequally, then they're treated fairly based on some defensible standard. The example from the text is that most people might believe that it's fair to pay people higher salaries if they work harder, or if they contribute a greater amount to the firm. However, there is less certainty around chief executive officer salaries that are hundreds or even thousands of times larger than those of other employees. The common good approach highlights the interlocking relationships that underlie all societies. Using this approach, it argues that the respect and compassion for all others is the basis for ethical actions. It emphasizes common conditions that are important to the welfare of everyone. These sorts of conditions are systems of laws, effective police and fire departments, healthcare, public education, and perhaps even public recreational areas. The deontology approach states that morality of an action is based on whether that action itself is right or wrong under a series of rules, rather than based on the consequences of that action. An example of deontology is that some have the belief that killing someone is wrong, even if it's in self-defense. Traditional approach for resolving ethical issues, found in the left column of Table 3.1. 1. Recognize an ethical issue. 2. Get the facts. 3. Evaluate alternative actions. 4. Make a decision and test it. Please refer to the table for more detail and giving voice to values, GVV approach, which is the right column of table 3.1. One, identify an ethical issue. Two, purpose and choice. Three, stakeholder analysis. Four, powerful response. And five, scripting and coaching. Again, the details are broken down in the actual table in the text. Ethics in the corporate environment should be a code of ethics there are the fundamental tenets of ethics, which are responsibility, accountability, and liability. And what is unethical is not necessarily illegal. 
Responsibility means that you accept the consequences of your decisions and actions. Accountability refers to determining who is responsible for the actions that were taken. And liability is a legal concept. It means that individuals have the right to recover from the damages done to them by other individuals, organizations, or systems. It is important to underline that being unethical is not necessarily that that action is illegal. The text gives the example of a bank's decision to foreclose on a home. So if the homeowner has not paid the mortgage, then the bank may take possession of the home as collateral for the mortgage. And if the bank's not getting paid, they have the legal right to foreclose and sell the house to recover the money that is due to them. But it can have lots of ethical questions in doing that because you're going to deprive the individual of a house and all the consequences of being potentially homeless or forced into a desperate financial situation that may or may not be their fault. It's about Business 3.1. Google links online search data and offline purchase data. What we want you to consider here is what are the different sources that can be used to integrate and analyze spending data? And how can online use of this data for advertising result in a privacy invasion? Ethics and information technology. The four general categories of ethical issues related to IT are privacy, accuracy, property, and accessibility. Privacy issues are those around collecting, storing, and disseminating information about individuals. Accuracy involves the authenticity, fidelity, and correctness of the information that is collected and processed. Property issues involve who owns the information and what is the value of that information. Accessibility issues revolve around who should have access to that information and whether or not they should pay a fee for that access. It's about Business 3.2, a little mini quiz. Consider, data available online is subject to varying levels of copyright protection. How do you use it? What resources do you use for studying and where does it come from? Privacy. We're going to go through an introduction. We're going to talk about electronic surveillance personal information and databases, information on internet bulletin boards, news groups, and social networking sites, privacy codes and policies, and the international aspects of privacy. Introduction to privacy. Privacy is the right to be left alone and to be free of unreasonable personal intrusions. Information privacy is the right to determine when and to what extent information about you can be gathered and or communicated to others. Court decisions in many countries have followed two general rules. One, the right of privacy is not absolute and privacy must be balanced against the needs of society. And two, the public's right to know supersedes the individual's right of privacy. Digital dossiers can be created using profiling. Data aggregators include LexisNexis, Axiom, and Statistics Canada. Those are organizations that collect information about individuals from multiple different sources and they're made available under different levels of access to other interested parties. Electronic surveillance. Electronic surveillance is using technology to monitor individuals as they go about their daily routines. Surveillance is conducted by employers, governments, and other institutions. For example, Surveillance cameras in airports, subways, banks, and other public venues. Inexpensive digital sensors are found in laptop webcams, video game sensors, smartphone cameras, utility meters, passports, and identification cards. Smartphones create geotags. For instance, if you take a picture with a smartphone, it may record the location associated with that picture. Google and Microsoft Street View images, which you're probably aware of, are surveillance type pictures of streets and of neighborhoods from driving through to make Google Maps. And then there are drones. It's about Business 3.3, license plate readers. Consider, how else could license plate and driver's license data be used? Is it a possible invasion of privacy when combined with geographic positioning data? Personal information in databases. 
Personal data locations and record keepers include credit reporting agencies, banks and financial institutions, utility companies, employers, hospitals, schools, and government agencies such as the CRA or provincial or municipal governments. The major concerns about information you provided to these record keepers are, do you know where the records are? Are the records accurate? Can you change inaccurate data? How long will it take to make a change? Under what circumstances will personal data be released? How are the data used? To whom are the data given or sold? And how secure are the data against access by unauthorized people? It's about Business 3.4, India's Aadhaar system. Consider, how would you feel if your province implemented a fingerprint identification system? Do you use biometric fingerprint identification with your smartphone or computer? Why or why not? Information on internet bulletin boards, news groups, and social network sites. Free speech versus privacy on the internet. Derogatory information can influence hiring decisions. Little or no recourse for victims. According to the text, there's no better illustration of the conflict between free speech and privacy than the internet itself. There are lots of websites that contain anonymous derogatory information on identified individuals, but those identified individuals have little recourse in the matter. Many organizations, however, do use the internet in examining job applications, including doing Google search and searching social networking sites. Therefore, derogatory information contained on the internet can harm a person's chances of being hired. Privacy codes and policies. An organization's guidelines for protecting the privacy of its customers, clients, and employees. There are two methods of informed consent, the opt-out model and the opt-in model. The opt-in model requires your permission. The opt-out model assumes your permission and allows you the option of opting out. Platform for privacy preferences, P3P, is a protocol that automatically communicates privacy policies between a website and its visitors. European Directive on Data Privacy, the GDPR, an extremely powerful and far-reaching bit of legislation that has some built-in enormous, enormous fines that companies have to be aware of. Canadian Standards Association, Model Code, and Canada's Personal Information Protection and Electronic Documents Act, PEPIDA, are some of our national standards. Table 3.3, Privacy Policy Guidelines, a sampler. So this sampler presents three sample sections, one data collection, two data accuracy, and three data confidentiality. Guidelines such as those shown as an example in Table 3.3 help to codify requirements for employees, provide a standard set of procedures, protect organizations from litigation, and can be used as a measurement tool if disciplinary action is required. It's about Business 3.5, Facebook and the Cambridge Analytica data scandal. This is an important case to read about just from a general social awareness. Consider whether all personally identifiable data is confidential, whether you would be concerned if all of your Facebook data was made available to Facebook app developers. International aspects of privacy. The global nature of the internet complicates data privacy. Approximately 50 countries have data protection laws. They're inconsistent standards from country to country, and there are problems with trans-border data flow. Obviously, data flows everywhere, and having a different set of standards in one country versus another means that it could be breaking the law in one, but not the other. In general, whether the textbook mentions it or not, Europe has a much higher standard of data privacy. It's almost elevated to a human right level. The United States has a much lower standard of privacy. For the most part, they view a lot of data as being owned by the employer or the company that you're working for in the case of work-related data and don't allow a lot of personal ownership of that data or personal control of that data. 
Canada somewhere in between, but has been considered on the lower end of having privacy controls in place. The closing case, accessing patient data through electronic medical records. What we want you to think about here is examples of your recent private medical data and where it is stored. How much of your medical data do your medical caregivers have access to? That brings us to the end of this chapter's lecture. Thank you for your attention.